IMAR's 5th National Leadership Conclave 2019. May I request all past presidents of IMA? First of all, I'll request Dr. J.S. Janeja to please join us on the stage for the lamp lighting ceremony. May I also request Mr. Sanjeev Singh, Mr. Sanjeev Mehta, and all our esteemed speakers who are here with us to please join us on stage for the lamp lighting ceremony. May I now request Ms. Rekha Sethi, Director General Aimer, to deliver the introductory remarks. Good morning, Mr. Nyotia, Mr. Kiloska, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you all with us at Aimer's fifth National Leadership Conclave, or the NLC as we like to call it. The NLC today has become an important platform for debating urgent national issues and drawing maps for the way forward. The conclave gives us an opportunity to pose important questions to India's leaders and seek their thoughts and ideas on the future of India. This year, the conclave focuses on the urgency of innovation and reforms in the country in a fast-changing world. It is now or never for India and the next 10 years are crucial. While technology has made it easier to create enterprises, it has made it harder to create jobs. Globalization has brought the world closer, but is now tearing the world apart. There is disillusionment with the old solutions, but a consensus on new ideas still elude us. Today, the nation is impatient for solutions but can turn, that can turn India's potential into performance. We are privileged to have with us today many distinguished thought leaders to discuss the many facets of India's potential and challenges. They will help us analyze tricky issues and find ways to realize the nation's destiny. We start with an overview of the state of the nation and its priorities for the next decade. We have scheduled focus panel discussions and fireside chats through the day to explore India's ideal agenda for the next decade. Session two, takes a look at the impact of technology on the economy and considers innovations to survive disruption. Digitization of products and processes has opened up businesses to rapid innovations, and a panel will discuss how organizations can become agile and innovative in creating their own future. A panel discussion on the theme of the conclave is scheduled later in the day, where we will be joined by distinguished business leaders to explore India's urgent priorities, including sustaining a high economic growth, raising India's stature in the world, and meeting the aspirations of India's young majority. This is election time, and everyone has an opinion on who's going to form the next government. To get an expert take on this issue, we've invited the country's preeminent editors to analyze the political competition and share their predictions. 
We also have a couple of fire ch fireside chats planned during the day with some very distinguished speakers. We chat with India's new business superstars and then later with a man known for his management and leadership style and question him on his life. There's so much that we can learn from these amazing individuals and their stories. AIMA has set up a Young Leaders Council this year to give a platform to the new generation. Within a few months, the council has attracted over 100 members, who include startup founders, big business houses, professional managers, and accomplished artists. We have already set up chapters in Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Kolkata, Hyderabad, and Pune, and are looking to have chapters in smaller cities too. Recognizing the growing power of youth, the Conclave has a special session with some of the country's young leaders from the IMA Young Leaders Council. Time has come for the millennials to have their say and for the older ones to take note of it. I'm sure our youthful leaders will share thoughts and ideas which are very different from those of our generation. We have an exciting program lined up today and I hope you will enjoy it. With these words, allow me to welcome you once again to the uh, IMA National Leadership Conclave. And may I now invite the president of IMA, Mr. Harsh Niyotia, to make his address. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin this morning's interaction with an invocation to the Lord. Om Sahana Vavatu, Sahano Bhanaktu, Sahe Viryam Karvahe Vahe, Tejasvina Vadhi Tamatsuma Vidvisha Vahe, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May God protect us all. May he nourish us together. May we work together with great energy. May our endeavor be effective. May there be no hate amongst us. May peace be with us. Peace be with nature. Peace be with the divine forces. Mr. Sanjay Kiloskar, Rekha Sethi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. With that note from the ancient chant of the Ved Upanishads, I greet you all this morning at the fifth National Leadership Conclave. I appreciate that all of you could join us in this day-long deliberation about India's present and the future. Congratulations first to Aerospace Engineers Private Limited on winning the IMA Dr. J.S. Juneja Award for creativity and innovation in the MSME sector. The MSMEs are lifelines of the economy as they contribute significantly towards the GDP and more importantly towards jobs. This award is IMA's way to appreciate the important role played by small businesses. Congratulations also to the IMA and KPMG teams that have produced a fine report on the e social and economic impact of digital transformation of India. It is a significant piece of research that helps us appreciate India's transformation into the digital economy. The report tells us that increasing internet connectivity and use of smartphones are driving India's dig digitization, which in turn is opening up entrepreneurship to all. The government is using digitization to simplify governance and to increase tax revenues. From banking services and shopping to even finding soulmates, these are all happening online. Now each enterprise and citizen ought to find ways to make the most of this digitized existence. In this context, the IMA KPMG report is a huge help in appreciating what is happening, and what to do about it. However, digitization and automation are not the only sources of disruption in today's world. 
globalization is under attack. The spirit of rule-based international trade, which thrives by a shared commitment, is waning. Instead, competition for supremacy is back in fashion. Treaties are giving way to tariff wars. Borders are becoming prohibitive again. Even data is being nationalized. Aggressive nationalism is taking over international cooperation. The policy, the global policy environment is becoming even more unpredictable. To protect its self-interest and find economic growth in such an uncertain geopolitical and economic climate is a challenge that we face here in India. Waiting and hoping for things to settle down is a luxury India cannot afford. India's leadership needs to be imaginative, agile, diligent, in continuously adjusting to the frequent changes. Internally, India needs to work out a coherent political and economic consensus so it can roll out a decent economic growth. Today, India is the fastest growing large economy in the world and is expected to remain the growth leader for the next decade. However, the growth must be a democratic one. India cannot be an economic superpower while having pervasive poverty and low quality jobs. And poverty cannot be eliminated by merely giving out doles because it is not so much about the lack of money as it is about the paucity of capabilities. A nation gets richer when its people take innovation seriously and build their lives around creating new and better solutions to life's countless problems. When relief from the immediate distress is important, it is imperative that the distress does not become accepted as a life condition. Hence, India should put her highest priority on continuous learning and everyday innovation. The quantity and quality of jobs is the ultimate proof of a country's economic prowess. It is possible to achieve a high rate of economic growth briefly by pumping capital into more productive machines. But, in our, but without enough capable people, we are not going to be able to do it productively and efficiently. And without enough people, we would not have the economy to purchase the goods and services. It is the productivity of the population that matters more than the productivity of the machines. India's future success is contingent on nearly all Indians being able to work with smart machines to make more and better things. The best solution to job creation problems is to make entrepreneurship less painful. Unlike large companies that rely more on automation for growth, it is the young enterprise where majority of the jobs are created. Hence, it is important to leave enough room for small enterprises to exist and to grow. India needs to learn from experience and replace selective protection with open but supervised competition. Too much protection for either the small or the large enterprise would lead to cronyism, corruption, unemployment, and poverty. Removing corruption must be central to India's mission as removing poverty. Corruption feeds on people's desperation for basic things. The key to eliminating corruption is to remove the incentives for corruption. India needs to deal with shortages and restrictions that, may, that make people give and take undue favors. People can only be as moral as they can afford to be. The aim is to eliminate the process that makes people and enterprises vulnerable to extortion. Innovation, once again, can help us find a solution. The National Leadership Conclave is an opportunity to deeply examine such challenges and find immediate and adequate solutions. India has a window of opportunity to grow rapidly and become one of the world's anchor economies. But this window will not remain open forever. Time has come for India to shift its faith to proactive thinking and action from letting things take their own course. It is now or never for India to take a call. With these words, I am pleased to welcome all of you, and I hope you have a fruitful and a day full of learning. Thank you very much for your kind presence here.
May I now invite Mr. Sanjay Kiloskar to please address us. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have the presentation of AIMA, Dr. J.S. Janeja Award for Creativity and Innovation for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. May I request Dr. J.S. Janeja, past president AIMA and chairman Global Projects and Services Private Limited to please join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the winners of Dr. J.S. Janita Award for Creativity and Innovation for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. Aerospace Engineers Private Limited is a manufacturer of components for aviation, space and missile industries. The company has extensive capabilities in precision manufacturing and it has the prestigious AS9100C certification. Its surface treatment facilities are approved by Defense Research and Development Organization and Indian Space Research Organization. The company started in 2000 to cater to the needs of India's fast-growing aviation, space and defense sectors. It began by manufacturing seats, gaskets, bellows, hoses, etc. and progressed to make hose assemblies, lubrication oil pumps, valves and composite components. Aerospace engineers had demonstrated outstanding excellence in problem solving and product development and it has earned the confidence of DRDO and ISRO. It has developed composite components for BrahMos and LR-SAM missiles besides a host of seals and hoses for critical applications. All India Management Association is pleased to present Aerospace Engineers Private Limited with AIMA Dr. Janeja Award for Creativity and Innovation in Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises for 2018. We have with us Mr. R. Sundaram, MD and CEO, Aerospace Engineers Private Limited to receive the award. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a huge round of applause for the winner. Our congratulations to Mr. Sundaram and Aerospace Engineers Private Limited on winning this coveted award. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will be releasing the IMA KPMG report on social and economic impact of digital transformation in India. May I now request Mr. Akshay Bhalla, Partner and COO, Markets and Strategy KPMG in India, and Mr. Anish Tay, Partner and Head ENR Sector KPMG in India, to please join us on stage for the report release. Thank you all for doing the honours. May I request you all to please take your seats back on the stage and may I request Mr. Akshay Bhalla to please say a few words on the report and its content. Thank you, uh, Mr. Harshwadhar Niyotia, President Aima, uh, Chairman Ambuja Niyotia Group, Mr. Sanjay Kuloskar, uh, Senior Vice President Aima, Chairman MD Kuloska Brothers, Ms. Rekha Sethi, uh, Director General Lima, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining in today at IMA's fifth National Leadership Conclave. In association with IMA, KPMG in India is pleased to present the report, Socioeconomic Impact on Digital Transformation. 
Teams from IMA and KPMG have worked tirelessly together in the last few months to reach at some very interesting insights on this very relevant topic. It is but a foregone conclusion that the pace of innovation will continue to quicken in the next few years, and technology would offer opportunities to transform our nation. It is therefore important for both the government and the private stakeholders to work together towards adopting much thought through and carefully tailored approaches to map, measure, and manage the use of technologies to continue addressing the most complex social and economic issues in India. The report is a representation of ideas from a diverse base of stakeholders, including service providers, manufacturers, industry associations, policymakers, and thought leaders. It is aimed at presenting a consolidated view of various stakeholders to mitigate and alleviate potential disruptions that the industry is currently is facing. My heart thanks to the teams and everyone who has contributed to put this report together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhalla. May I now request Mr. Sanjay Kirloska, Senior Vice President IMA, to address the audience. Harsh, Rekha. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Harsh, for a very cordial welcome and an excellent inaugural address. It's a pleasure to be with you and address the National Leadership Conclave. This is a great platform for Indian leaders to brainstorm pressing issues and think of effective ways to tackle them. Given the rapid changes in the world, this NLC is focused on immediately actionable ideas. The ongoing disruption of old ideas and technologies offers India its best chance to transform itself. It's up to us to see the mind-boggling change as a source of struggle or as an invitation to skip incremental stages and go straight to the front row of advanced nations. For the past many decades, India has painstakingly built the base to launch itself into the next orbit of development, and the time has come to turn the country's undeniable potential into undoubted performance. It is now or never for India. The next decade is crucial for India because if we fail to take off now, India could easily slip into the mindset of mediocrity. The next decade will test our resolve to become a super economy and an influential member of the global community. It will also test our ability to eradicate poverty and empower our citizens with better education, jobs, incomes, and freedoms. A major technological upgrade has to be central to India's mission for the next decade. The ability to develop new technologies and new applications is a measure of our power and prospects. Digitization and automation are becoming pervasive, and whatever is not connected to the global grid is becoming outmoded. Digital deprivation is a new form of poverty. We need to ensure that every citizen has a know-how for connecting with the world and using smart tools for work and living. A digital divide is holding back our country. We've made tremendous progress in making mobile phones and wireless internet accessible to the majority of people. Already over a billion Indians have mobile phones, and half of them are smart ones. However, we need to raise our standards to support our aspirations. For example, treating a 512 kbps internet connection as broadband is a recipe for mediocrity. Spectrum-starved telecom networks cannot ensure reliable communications or transactions, which is a must for business. India also needs to provide digital interfaces in local languages to improve digital literacy and to bring the majority of the population into the digital economy. In fact, the education system itself needs a major overhaul to make it relevant for the present and for the future. A lot of joblessness is due to divergence between education and the market. Most young Indians are investing time and money in learning things that are already outmoded. So we have a situation where employers are struggling to find suitable hires, and the educated young are struggling to find suitable jobs. Our government still has a big say in what can be taught and how and therefore the onus is on the government to reform both the content and the delivery of education in accordance with the changing economy. Therefore, I was quite happy to hear our former president say yesterday that he's looking forward to the private sector to play a 
more important role in education. The government alone can subsidize new education for the masses, and its spending on education must at least double to 6% of GDP. Without boosting public spending on good quality education, we cannot hope to sustain a high GDP growth rate. India must utilize online education to overcome the challenge and scale of scale and reach in education. Regulatory institutions such as UGC, AICTE, and various school boards need a radical and instant upgrade so that regulated education is useful. There's also a need for more legitimacy for private standards in education. Healthcare is another critical area for our future. Only a healthy population can build a strong nation. India loses a huge amount of production because of health issues. Once again, the scale of the problem is daunting, but new technologies can help. Mobile phones and the internet can be used to monitor health and deliver consultation online at a very low cost and in any corner of our country. However, hospital care is becoming more expensive because of technology, and the only way to make it accessible to all is by providing health insurance to all. Many useful in initiatives have been taken by the government and the private sector in this respect, but the insurance coverage is still quite scanty. The key to becoming a healthy nation is to become more event innovative with preventive health care and minimize the need for hospital care. Good living conditions are the best cure for most diseases. Though high GDP growth may come with high levels of pollution and stress, India can use clean technologies and materials to raise the health quotient of our economic activities. Our mission for the next decade must also include a rebalancing of our economy. The farm sector's share of the economy has been shrinking and is ejecting unskilled workers at a rapid pace. The only way to generate more jobs on farms is to shift focus from traditional farming to high-tech farming, which will need more people in managing the farms and processing their output. Farmers need access to sensors and satellites as much as, sense, as much as seeds and fertilizers. While immediate help is needed to relieve distress in farming, the only permanent solution is to make farming, vi to make farming viable is to let markets play a greater role in agriculture. Manufacturing, too, needs to stage a comeback. India's investment in physical and digital infrastructure will pay off if industry can adapt to the new trends. More and more products are becoming services because customers are not merely looking for means to solve their problems, but for total solutions. Also, with clean and smart technologies, manufacturing need not remain a polluting activity and it can operate with fewer regulatory challenges and attract the top talent. However, our laws need to catch up with the technology to free manufacturing. Overall, our agenda for the next decade has to aim at building human and technological capability for achieving 9 to 10 percent growth, at least for a decade. It would require more investment by entrepreneurs, and an investment rate of 35 to 40 percent is desirable at our current stage of development. The private sector has to show more entrepreneurship and more inventiveness. India also has to become a vast construction site over the next decade because many new roads, highways, waterways, freight corridors, and smart cities are needed. In the past, infrastructure developed lagged growth and in turn choked the country's growth potential. Most importantly, we have to eliminate the pervasive trust deficit in the system. Economic initiative and trust in society's institutions go hand in hand. India can unleash the energy and creativity of its citizens by creating conditions of explicit and implicit trust in the system. It is my hope and belief that we will make a transition from a country of perennial potential to one of sustainable performance. It is up to each one of us to do the right thing. With these words, I wish you a great day ahead with some very interesting sessions and some very iconic speakers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we come to the end of the opening session. We will now move on to our second session of the conclave, which is Surviving Disruption, Create the Future. 
As you all know, we are conducting a poll during this session. Please scan the QR code printed on your badges and follow IMA social media channels to stay updated with all IMA happenings and management updates. We request you to download IMA mobile app to participate in live polling during the conclave. You can download the IMA mobile app from IMA website www.ima.in homepage from Google Play Store and iTunes Store. For users who are not using Android and Apple phones can take part in the poll by clicking the direct polling link on IMA website which is www.ima.in. If you have the IMA app installed on your Android or Apple phone, then you can simply open the app and participate using the following details. User ID is NLC2019, the password is IMA, and 